totally up to you. And this mini webinar series is on Google Arts and Culture. So we're gonna spend the next half hour kind of looking at what Google Arts and Culture has to offer. Um, it really is one of those things that uh, once you see what it has, you realize, hey, this is pretty cool. Um, and sometimes it's just a matter of how am I gonna use this and um, thinking about that kind of thing. Um, so I'm gonna share some ideas and different things there. So if you could drop a here in the chat for me, um, I'm gonna take attendance right now, but um, just in case I miss you or something goes weird with this, um, I'll have that in there. So, perfect. All right, so let's talk about Google Arts and Culture. Um, it is one of the tools that Google has put out. It's been around since 2011, um, but if you've never heard of it, um, you know, you're not alone. A lot of people just don't realize it's out there. And what Google was trying to do was kind of give a, an online site for all things that are art and history related, uh, where they can, you know, where people can really get to see art that maybe is kind of hidden in different parts of the world that you normally couldn't um, access. But it's more than just artists. And um, I'm gonna show you some different features that it has. We're gonna dive into the site. I'll show you some of my favorite things. Um, there is an app, so if you're iPad-based, um, grab the app. It actually has some functions in the app that doesn't have on your Chromebooks. That is pretty remarkable. So um, this is one of those that, when you're looking at whether or not you can use it or not, it's one of those that actually has more to offer um, on the app than it does on the website. All right, so I think I got everybody in. For those of you who just joined us, let me just do this one more time. I'm gonna take attendance, but um, please drop a quick here in the chat for me. Um, so I make sure to capture all of you. Let's see, we got it. Good, awesome, yep, perfect. All right, and I will share this with you as always. Let me just do that now. I'll share it again at the end in case anyone new um, comes in. So let me grab that link. And that way you have a copy of what we're gonna go over today. Perfect. Okay, so let's dive into Google Arts and Culture. So Google Arts and Culture has um, over 2,000 different museums and um, artifacts and different things from over 2,000 museums around the world. What's nice about it is you have high resolution images and I'm gonna show you later on how you can um, leverage these images to be able to look at art and artifacts in ways you normally can't. So you go to a museum and they have this beautiful painted ceiling or you go to this um, this famous place and they have this gorgeous ceiling. Well, in, in Google Arts and Culture, you can actually zoom in and see the different parts and really analyze and, and discuss what you see in that picture instead of looking at this 30 foot um, tall ceiling and, and seeing the different things up there. Um, it has artifacts. It has a lot of data about culture. Um, it has all sorts of historical events on a timeline and um, through different people and events and, and places. It has all of the different art movements and I'll show you how to locate those. It has tons on famous people. And when I mean famous people, I don't mean celebrities. I mean um, people in history, authors, writers, um, you know, science, uh, people who discovered things in science um, and a lot to do obviously with artists. Um, it has Google experiments and what it, these are, are things that Google's trying out using artificial intelligence, uh, where they're trying to figure out what machine learning can do and kind of pushing the boundaries on what is possible. You can explore in Google Arts and Culture through different places, including your own. So it, it gives you access to information. Sometimes it just brings you to a website for that location, but other times it will actually, if it has something from that location, will take you in um, through some sort of um, tour through that location. Um, and there is augmented reality and virtual reality and even 3D images that are built right into this platform. So it has a lot and it's hard sometimes to find them, but I'll walk you through how to do that. I'm gonna kind of break it down that way. So the first thing I wanna show you on Google Arts and Culture is the Explore feature. And um, this can be explored by lots of different ways or in a lot of different ways. So I'm gonna take you out to the Explore tab to kind of get started here. And on the Explore tab, and really I went to Google Arts and Culture backslash Explore. So I'm just in the Explore section, which you see in the top right of your screen. And when you get there, they always have highlights and these are ones that they kind of pick, they're very random. Um, so this one is um, the art camera, they have 360 videos, which means you're watching in a virtual reality where you can spin around and see everything in a location in um, 360 degrees on video. And then it has Google Street View, so you actually can walk the street or walk the museum by clicking forward as you're going through and checking things out. 
You can also see in the Explorer, they have categories. And I mentioned these already, artists, mediums, movements, historical events and figures um, and places. So I mentioned those already. You can also explore by time and by color. And I kind of want to um, show you this a little bit. So I'm going to grab time and you can see it goes uh, back to 500. <laughs> even um, You can even go to the far past and you can kind of look at all these artifacts from some time in history. So let's say you're studying ancient civilizations and you want to take a look at different artifacts that have been found from the, that, that time period. You can certainly do that by, by utilizing this on a time scale. And you can even look at different um, historical artifacts um, based on moments in history, you know, what was happening in the 1500s or the 1800s or whatnot. And you can see the art that's popular at that time. And it's not just seeing the image. So we all know the girl with the pearl earring. We've seen this one, it's a famous painting. Um, when I open it up, you're gonna see that Vermeer um, painted it, which you might already know, but it also has details about it. All right, in there. And then it gives you some other recommendations based on, um, information from that one. So using same medium, location, same artist, um, similar types of colors and different things there. And then you can also view different things in Street View and explore connections. So they give you so much more beyond just looking at the image. Um, so if you ever take, uh, if you've ever gone to an art museum with, with a small child, and I certainly have done this, um, they just kind of look at it and they're like, ah, oh, and they move on. But here they can really go, what is that? What was happening? What's the history behind it? And they can really explore through there. Um, as I continue on with the explore and I go by color, so this is great for, um, for your art classroom or your, um, you know, if you're doing a creative kind of works. As you go through each of the colors, it shows you art that really has that color as the focus um, color within it. So um, it kind of gives you an idea how you can use that color in different ways and with different mediums. So you can see like maybe you love pink and you want to look at all the pictures that are pink. All right, so you can go through and do that. Also in the Explore, as I continue around, you have all these different collections. Um, and there's tons of them. They always have weekly highlights, so they have editorial pieces on highlights about things that have happened with art and history and so on. It has popular topics, so these are ones that people tend to be searching within Google Arts and Culture. So you can look at Monet or Raphael or whoever it happens to be. So Explore is a great feature that's in there for you. Um, that you can do all of these different things. And we'll kind of break down some of these a little bit more too. Uh, I heard a ding, let me just go over here. There we go. Okay. So um, you can also explore locally. And what I mean by that is you can actually see what's in your area. So if I click on the locally tab here on my, um, on, on in Google Arts and Culture, what it's going to do is it's going to say, oh, you're somewhere in Wilton and it'll, um, which I'm in Saratoga. And um, this time it didn't find me. Maybe maybe because I'm, I'm at work today. It doesn't want to find me here. Um, but then it'll explore places near you and then you can browse different locations. So when you visit, um, especially if you're on the app, it's going to work a little bit better here, although it worked at home for me. I don't know why it's not working in the office. Um, but then you can explore these different locations as you click in and drag, you can actually see what it looks like in that, um, in that area by street view. And then you can go out to the actual websites for those locations. So you always have that as well. All right. For those of you who just joined us, I'll put the um, the link to the presentation at the end here. So you can see when I took the picture um, in the slides, I was at home and I was able to pull up the things that were local for us here, um, as far as the New York State Museum and, and those sort of things. All of them are linked out to their websites, but sometimes they have more information depending on your location. Another way um, that you can use Google Arts and Culture is you can create your own collection. So as long as you're logged into your Google account, you can create your own or you can use one that's already there. So let's say again, you're studying um, a famous book. Um, maybe you're studying Diary of Anne Frank. Um, you can search that within here and create your own collection of artifacts and information about um, her and the location where she lived and all the different things that happened within, that, within her story. You can also look through and see the different collections that are already made. And if you like them, you can like them and then it saves for you in your likes. Um, so you can look at all of them. You can narrow it down by A to Z and you can even do it by a map. So that means it's going to show you all of the collections based on places in the world. So um, if I click on this one here, um, it's going to bring me down to all these different places. So there's two collections in Albany, for example. So I'm gonna go in here and you're gonna see that they have this one here, which is the Albany Institute of Art and History. 
Um, there's another one out here um, in Massachusetts, the Williamstown Theater Festival, and so on. You can see the different uh, ones that are available based on where you kind of zoom in to be able to, um, to take a look at and figure things out. All right, so all of those collections are in there. Um, to create your own collection, so if I'm in here, and let's say I go to this site. All right, if I really like this one about Martin Van Buren National Historic Site, which I've actually never been to and I grew up near, so it's kind of odd that I've never been or I, maybe I don't remember it, um, but I, I grew up near Kinderhook. But um, if you click the little heart, it will add that to your profile, so it saves it. From here, you're going to get all the information that it wants to tell you about um, this location, all the art that is, um, uh, you know, kind of like, caught with it or whatever, you know, part of that collection. It has two different virtual walking tours that you can do, and then it shows you the map. So let me show you right now while we're here what Street View kind of looks like, and then um, when we get to that slide, I can kind of breeze over a little bit more. So here I am, I'm standing on the grounds of Martin Van Buren's National Historic Site in Kinderhook, um, New York. All right, and I can zoom and look around in this 360 tour. And anywhere that you see the arrow come up where you see my mouse, when I click on it, I can continue on. So now as I'm walking, I can take this walking tour like I'm actually at the park and I'm going to different places. So here I am taking a nice little walk in the woods right now. Um, and you can take a look and explore each of these locations as you spin will take you back to see where you were and all the different locations. And as you hit the arrow, it takes you back wherever you want to go. So you can do these actual virtual walking tours. And these are really fun if you um, do like a time lapse video and just keep clicking the forward button to actually take people on these little video tours of it as well. So lots of ways you can use these virtual tours for kids to explore, um, you know, on places that maybe you wouldn't be able to go to. Oh, I didn't show you where the collections are held. I'll grab that um, to show you where they go. So um, the explore by type of collection. So um, I showed you one way that you can grab the different collections, but this is how you can do the different types. So all of these collections um, also can be separated into category based on what it is. So here's your paper collection, your oil paints, wood, silver. It goes on with anything that um, that you can think of. So maybe there's an art medium that you're looking at, or you want to see what is, you know, what is stainless steel used for in art or whatever it happens to be. And you click on it and it's going to show you the 400 plus different um, items that are made out of stainless steel. Um, and each of these has its own story. So you click on it and then you're going to find out more information based on why this is art and what it is and how it was used, where it's located in the world, um, when it was built, when it was uh, designed, that sort of thing. Um, you can also explore, and I kind of already touched on this, beyond the artifact where you can find that information. So when I was on this one and I was on this cool looking chair here, um, I can read the information about it. Again, I could like it. I can see, like I said, where um, the museum, what museum it's from. I can send this out anywhere I want. Um, I can grab the details here. I can see other collections and I can see all the tags that are associated with this so I can explore beyond there. So maybe based on this, I like this chair that, but that's by the same artist. I can pull this one up again, like it. Um, I can grab a link to it if I'm doing a research project, read the information about this chair, and again, see more um, recommendations. And then if I click on the little museum icon, it will actually take me out to that museum. So now I can explore the actual museum where the, that art happens to be. Um, and I can read the stories of that about the art in that museum, see different things in their collection, and I can see their items that they have images of. The other cool thing, if I went back again and um, with this, is you see how it has the little like zoom in? And I mentioned this earlier, and you can really zoom in on these um, these art pieces where you can get a lot closer to it than you actually could in a museum, um, you know, because you're not they're not worried about you touching them. So you can see the different. Uh, design and the textures and all the different things on any piece of art um, that they have this zoom in feature on. And I mentioned these already, but you can do virtual tours of like 200 different museums in the world. Um, and they have tons and tons of those walking tours. Like I mentioned, we did the one at Martin Van Buren. This one is um, in Versailles. Um, and it, some of them are very in depth. Some of them are a little bit more basic. Um, sometimes they're in video, sometimes they're um, 
they're just like you were watching. Sometimes you have to click to go to different pieces. So you can see right here, they have a virtual tour um, through stories, through up, um, art up close, and even never before seen content where they even have 3D videos that you can look at. They also sometimes under these will have activities. So here's a, a little fun quiz to find out what royal you would be. Um, or you can find out some information like the, um, so 11 secrets from the palace. Um, and then you can have the palace to yourself. So this video walks you through how to, how to do it. And then um, you can see how the virtual reality experience is made. And then you can actually get this app on your phone that will take you through or on your um, tablets that takes you through um, this whole virtual reality world. And then you can also uh, up close look at some of these different pictures. So if I grab this one, again, you can zoom in on her and see all the detail um, on the dress. And you can see how incredible this art was, um, you know, as far as it was painted, where maybe before you were seeing it from far away in a, in a museum. Again, you can always visit the museum, get some more information on the topic. They have 3D models, which I've alluded to already, but I'll show you how one works. So this one, and they, what they use is this app called Poly, and it's actually, you can use Poly on your Chromebook or on an iPad. Um, where you can create these 3D augmented reality um, images. Um, but this one is taking me to uh, Thomas Jefferson's uh, memorial. And you can see that I'm zooming in around. I'm the one actually spinning this. Um, I can see the underside. I can see, um, I can look at the dome, things you normally wouldn't be able to do. I can zoom in on different parts. So maybe I want to zoom in on the inside. I can, I can go right inside that um, piece of art as I'm moving it around and seeing different things. All right, it takes you right in as I'm zooming in and moving here. So um, you can, you know, zoom in to, to, to kind of see all of the information that's on the walls. Um, I can get inside to see Thomas Jefferson. I can do all these different things, explore the ceiling, the floor. I'm probably making you all a little nauseous. Um, but you can see how this uh, could be super fun for kids because they can explore it. It also will give you information below it um, and give you some other tags that go along with it. All right. Um, oh, I clicked on it again. Sorry, my bad. Another thing you can do, and um, this is more the historical side of things, is you can explore these different historical stories. And they do a lot through story on here, which, uh, I mean, that's the best way to learn history, right? It's the story of the people and the times and that sort of thing. So um, the one I pulled up here was unusual first pets. So lots of our presidents had unusual pets, um, Calvin Coolidge being one of the most um, unusual because he had, had a hippo. There was another that had an elephant. Um, you know, others have had pigs and owls and different things like that, like Theodore Roosevelt did. So you can go into history in arts and culture, and you can look at all these different ones that they have. So this one, I just pulled up the presidential pets because I thought it was fascinating. Um, but you can take a look at all those, and I can show you how to get to those. They also let you explore by places. So you can go anywhere you want to go in the world, and you can explore these rich photos and 360 tours and videos of places in the world. So you're studying China with your students. There's 42,000 items um, that relate to China that you can kind of take a look at and explore and um, teach your students about different cultures and environments and art movements and history. Um, so I'm going to grab China because I know, um, I think third grade studies China. I know I taught it in sixth grade. Um, so I'm just going to pull that one up here. Um, so you have this whole collection. They have 39 collections within it of different locations. So you can take a look at those. They have 100 stories. So these stories are going to be like, if I pull up this one, um, they're going to have some great image at the top. And then they're actually going to be an article that you can read, um, images that you can look at, and um, any other information that they can give you, as, as well as the museum that it came from. So you always have these stories built in as well. You can discover the place based on um, the, the different um, artifacts, you know, like the Wii. <laughs> that would be there. Here's Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. So you can take a look at why this is here and why um, this book where it has the electronic game would, might be in this, um, in this library. And this happens to be the Strong Museum of Play, which is so fun. If you've ever been, it's in Rochester, um, where you can see different um, things about play. All right, so that's places. Then I mentioned these experiments, and these are amazing. So this is one of those, I could teach a whole half hour just on the Google experiments. I'm just going to show you it real quick, um, because I know we only have half an hour together. 
Um, but Google Arts and Culture does all of these different uh, experiments. And some of these will work on your iPad, some of these will work on Chromebooks. So you kind of have to play around and figure out which one works. So if you look here where it says Android experiments, those are going to work on tablets. Um, and the Chrome experiments are going to work on your computer, but some of them might still work on an iPad. So you kind of have to play around with them. These will disappear at, at any moment's notice because they're all kind of like experiments. They're all things that people are trying out. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Um, and some really great experiments have come out of here. So if I go to the augmented reality one, you can actually um, see some drawings in, um, in 3D. You can look at all the different art experiments for how you can draw and build and do different things. Um, the Notable Woman one, um, this one's actually kind of fun. It puts famous women onto dollar bills and then you learn a little bit more about the, the, the Notable Women. Um, so it, it zooms in, here I've got Willa Cather, I can learn more, I can share the bill as soon as I zoom, it'll go to another one and it'll give me all of these great um, information about all these wonderful women. So they're all very different. This one is a little less interactive, but has some great information. You can see that there's actually an app um, associated with this one. And then there's other experiments, like um, if I go to the Chrome Music Lab, this happens to be a Chrome experiment where you can do this on an iPad or on, um, on your device, whatever device you have. And here I can explore art and music by Kadinsky, whereas as, as I draw, once it loads, all right, and I hit play, it's going to play based on how I move. And I can change colors. And it's going to change sounds. And you build music this way. There's a song music maker that you can do. This one the students love where they're doing drums. And um, what you do is you hit play, and as it's going through, depending on where you click, it's going to make those different beats. So super fun for kids. So the Chrome experiments are phenomenal. There's um, there's ones for ELA where kids have to explore like word associations. There's um, there's one where you can conduct an orchestra where you where you do it right on your Chromebook and you stand back and you're the one moving your arms to conduct the orchestra. Lots of different experiments and they're always changing. They have the art selfie one. I think that one's only available on the iPad. Um, but they're all incredible and you can really just have some fun trying these different things out. Um, the voice experiments, there's one that you can try to sing like Freddie Mercury. Um, and that one is super fun. There's some multiplication ones. There's different ones that are super fun for you to try out. But try them on your device, see that it works, play around with it before you assign this or give this to a student because like I said, some work better than others um, and they're constantly changing. All right, so there's lots of different informations in there, or lots of information in there. So what can you use all of these things for? I showed you all the things that it has. What are you gonna do with it? Well, there's lots of fun, which I mentioned. You can get the app. They do have iSpy games built in. I showed you how to zoom in on an um, image to be able to explore that way. They have a cultural five where they give you um, a daily dose of arts and culture that you can check out. They have all sorts of in, in integrated quizzes um, you can, and I mentioned a ton of these already, but through history, you can explore battlegrounds, um, you know, um, timelines, you can do some different museum exhibits, you can create collections for students to do research projects, you can create your own galleries and virtual tours, all of that is built into Google Arts and Culture. In science, again, you can explore the people, you can explore those AI experiments because science, you know, computer science is a science, right? So you can look at all the different things there for machine learning. Um, they, there's tons of user galleries that are already put together. You can check out discoveries, read the stories about incredible places and all of those kind of things. My lights go out in my um, office when I sit at my desk too long. There we go. Um, and then you can also in ELA, you can read the stories, you can explore writers. They have a whole Harry Potter page that you can explore anything about the world of Harry Potter. They have tons of sports stories. So there's something for everyone out there. Um, you can look at content that was related to time. You can walk the areas that, um, that your character walked in, their, in, the, in the story. Um, there's so much you can use it for. So let me in the last five minutes, just go out to the website without going back and forth between the two. So I'm just gonna go home. This is what it looks like when you first open it up, okay? At the beginning, they're going to have some something new every day where you get to explore. This one is nine famous art studios. They always have some tours of different things. Um, they always have an explore of here's your 2000 museums around the world where you can look at the collections. Over 100,000 artwork works in high definition so you can really go and, and explore. Uh, uh, 10,000 famous sites and street views. So they give you different things from over 80 countries. 
Um, and then you can look at all the different museums. Here's that where I was mentioning they have all these games. Here's some of the games they have. So Pocket Gallery, Art Transfer, um, and Art Selfie are the three that they're featuring today. Every day it's different. Um, they have this really fun one where you create your own color palette that works on the iPad. And then the students can see artwork that has that color palette. You can download Arts and Culture Activity Book. That's one for today where they have mazes and coloring activities. Um, a big thing now is the strike a pose where people take famous art and then they recreate it at home. So you can take a look at some of the different ones that people have done um, with, with that kind of fun idea. Um, they always have a, a selection of, of something. Today they have music and art in there. They always have a question um, that you can uh, answer. And then if you get it, whether you get it right or wrong, they take you out and they teach you a little bit more about it. The cultural five I mentioned, these are different five things to get your little daily dose of something. So you can see they've got today is yoga, oceans, um, <laughs> Monet from Pollock, um, keeping an eel. So that's the oldest eel pie and mash shop and some historic uh, sites in Korea. And then they also, like I mentioned the home one already, they have street art collections that you can take a look at, heritage sites. Um, you can view just these incredibly beaut beautiful photographs and videos of places around the world. Look at textiles. Here's some activities, so fun activities for your students to try. Um, so create a colorful fashion show, do an immersive tour of the space shuttle discovery. There's another flight happening um, this week, right? It's been a decade since we've sent somebody out in space. So this might be a fun one to take your students to, to be able to explore this, to get ready for that um, SpaceX wa wa um, launch that's happening. Um, there's this one, they, they, they picked Brazil for this one. So there's some museums to explore, some dance with um, a night at the ballet. Um, this year, we don't have ballet right up here at the um, at SPAC. This is a good way to at least introduce your students to it. Nature, um, they always have some palaces and places. I mean, there's just so much, it just goes on and on. This is just the first page. I mean, you can just continue on forever. Augmented virtual reality, I mentioned, um, different pics, learn about different artists and painters, um, some beautiful photography. You can learn about food. I mean, it just continues on and on. So this is just the first page as I'm zooming through and seeing all of this information here. But how do you find it and how you sort it? Um, so if I go over to the left top corner, that little hamburger, this is where you're gonna find all of those things that I mentioned in the slide deck. Your home, your explore, nearby, your profiles, what's going to save the items that you saved, and then where you create your collections. So you'll have all of that in here. Anything that you heart becomes, um, becomes here, and then once you are, have your items here, then you can create collections with them. Um, you also can look at different themes, the different experiments. Um, you have a page to that, artists, mediums, art movements, historical events, places, and figures. So all of that information is here. You just click on it. It takes you to that page, and then you can check out all the different things that are on there. All right. Just talked to you for 20-some-odd minutes. How are we doing? Yeah, Christina, it does have some of that Google map. It has Google Street View actually built right into it, so that's perfect. Um, the, every day, Google Arts and Culture changes their front page. Um, and as far as the lessons, they seem to have lessons every day. I don't know if um, I'm not on it every day to see if it changes every day. But you know, this week, getting ready for today, they were different every day as far as what things um, were available. I don't know how long they stay on the site. Um, but I would imagine they go into a collection and they stay forever. I wouldn't imagine they take them down after they've had them. Good questions. Any other questions? All right, let me give you the um, presentation again. Um, there's not a ton on it. It's really just gonna take you back to the site, but at least it's um, organized for you. No, there is not a different version for your younger kids. It's all or nothing. So um, be careful, I guess. I mean, some of the art obviously wouldn't be appropriate for young kids, um, but maybe it's something you do guided where you're kind of running it or you take pictures of it. You can always screenshot something to share with the student versus sending them out to the site for your real young ones. Yeah. Good questions. All right. Have a wonderful rest of your day. If you need me for anything, please reach out.